So, I've been working on my shots in basketball for a few weeks now. And like every other skill you work on, you get better by time. But how does this process of learning happen? So, I got curious and looked at the papers online, and I found this. A first principles mathematical model integrates the disparate time skills of human learning. Well, if you don't understand the title, you're not alone. But as I read the abstract, I found out that this paper explains how over time we learn any skill you can possibly think of. From hoping in basketball to learning a hard math subject or typing on the keyboard of your computer. And there was a shocking point at the end of the paper, which I will get into at the end of the video. Hi, this is another cool concept video from Proofpilot. I make videos about math and science. If you're interested in original content like this, please hit the subscribe button. It will help me make more videos like this. Don't forget to like the video so others can see it too. Oh, and look at the gravitation series where I'm trying to understand the mathematics of Einstein's general relativity. Anyway, enough about me, let's go back to the video. So the article talks about how we can just split time intervals. There are some short time scales and long time scales. And it discusses this with a mathematical model. But what is this mathematical model? Well, interestingly enough, it's a dynamical system model. That's where everything for me just got interesting. And bear with me, it will be interesting for you too. So what is a dynamical system? Well, this is the science of how everything around us is changing constantly, as the philosopher Heraclitus said Pantheray, which means everything flows. This branch of mathematics is used in almost every science you know. It talks about everything, because everything is changing over time. Even you are not the same person as you were a second ago. The foundation of dynamical system was pioneered by Henri Poincaré. Dynamical systems analyzes how things change over time. Here is the rigorous definition of what a dynamical system is. A dynamical system is a tuple x and phi, where x is the space which what you are analyzing lives, and phi is the flow function which is from the Cartesian product of R and X to X. And the dynamical system has these conditions. The first one is that phi of 0 and X equals to X. And the second one is that phi of T plus S and X equals to phi of T and phi of S and X. Let me elaborate. Phi function, which we called it the flow function, is literally just the flow. Just imagine you throw a rock in the river. There are different flows, and those flows take your rock to different places. The first condition says that if you are at position x, then if no time passes, you still will be at the same position. And the second condition says that if a flow takes you for t plus s seconds, you will end up at the same position as if the flow takes you for s seconds and then t seconds. Let's get back on the paper about how we learn things. The paper took the ordinary differential method for describing its dynamical system, which will result in those flows I talked about. Your learning process is just a particle moving through these flows. Here is the parameters which the model considers. For long time scales parameters, we have individual's skill level, individual's rate of execution on task, task difficulty, and for short time parameters, we have individual's current motivation, individual's current fatigue, and P, which shows if the individual is working or not. I don't want to get into the details of the model but all these parameters relate to these equations, which are a bit of a headache, but these equations are written somehow that they just make sense. For example, if the task you are pursuing to do is a lot more than your current skill is, 
then you just give up and don't develop any skill. Or when you're learning, your motivation also is affected and it goes up. Or as time passes, your fatigue goes up and you tend to get more rest in the process. So what are the results? The article considers these situations. When the task has the same difficulty, when we have stepwise increase in the task's difficulty, when we have continuous increase in the task difficulty, and the shocking situation which I talked about earlier. So in the first situation, we see as time passes, the individual's skill development curve slows down and so is the motivation. As you go on, you get more tired and you like to rest more because of the fatigue you're bearing. And this is what the dynamics of the system tells us. This is not a statistical study, it's purely theoretical. In the second and third situation, we see much better results. See, when task level increases, you have much more motivation and less fatigue, and the curve of skill development is doing well. When the task level increases stepwise at first, we see some drops in the performance, but then they skyrocket. And there are a lot of good examples of such a situation. For example, let's say that you have been working with your computers for over 10 years and now you can type at 30 words per second. Then you decide to learn how to type with 10 fingers. Of course, at first you're going to be terrible at it, but when your skill increase, you can type 60 or more words per second. That's exactly what happens to high jump athletes. Nowadays, they use the Fosbury flop, which gives them a much better result, but it's considered much harder. Now we get to that situation, which I talked about earlier. Research in education and social psychology has found that individuals differ in their relationship to challenge learning opportunities. While some individuals are intrinsically motivated to seek out new challenges, others prefer situations where they can demonstrate their existing mastery. One study for instance found that students who were more intrinsically motivated were more likely to choose a more challenging task compared to students who were more competent but less intrinsically motivated. In simple terms, those who are just there for the competition and those who are generally interested in what they're doing. So of course, there is a parameter considered for that in those equations. And the result of the dynamics are mind-blowing. See, at first, those who are driven by performance get better skills and do better than those who are driven by learning. But in the long run, the learning-driven people achieve much more. So next time, when you are choosing to start a career or learn a skill, think that are you doing this for the sake of it or just for the competition? Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.